Hi, I'm Dom, the BCBA mom, and welcome back to my channel. All right, today we are talking about graphs. Because in ABA, if you can't analyze graphs, how do you know if the intervention is actually working? In today's video, we're going to dive into how to identify different elements of a graph, how to interpret a graph, and then what do you actually do with the raw data? We're going to take you on a step-by-step -step journey on how to create your very own graph. So if you are studying to become an RBT, there is a little section in the RBT exam on graphs. You're going to want to watch this video. This is going to help you pass that, se that section with ease, but also help you in your practice. So when you are truly analyzing graphs and data, you know exactly what you're talking about. So by the end of this video, you will not only understand graphs, you'll be making them, analyzing them, flexing them, and improving behavior outcomes all over the place. But before we get started, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video, share it with a friend. It's going to be good. First, let's look at a graph. What does an ABA graph look like? It will look something like this. Now, there are some major terms or terminology when you are trying to identify different components or elements of a graph. Let's start with the X axis and the Y axis. So the x-axis is the horizontal line, and usually it measures some form of time. How many days in a month? How many sessions were conducted? How many months in a year? It measures some form of time, trials, or sessions. The y-axis, that is your vertical line. So it was really hard for me to identify, to discriminate between the two when I first got into the program. So when I think of y-axis, I think of the y, it looks like it has a leg sticking out. So like it's standing up straight. So your y-axis is always going to be standing up straight or standing up vertical. And that's how you know that's the y-axis. So that helped me. Hopefully it helps you. The y-axis is measuring the frequency of the behavior. It's measuring occurrences. How many times that person engaged in that behavior? How long did they engage in that behavior? Percentage of correct, right? So or whatever the dependent variable is, that is what's on the y-axis. That is the behavior that we want to change. That is the behavior of concern. That is the behavior that we're focusing on. That's going to go along the y-axis. The graph title. You may think, who cares? Everybody knows about the graph title. The graph title is so important because as a BCBA or an RBT, you're going to be reading lots and lots of graphs. It's very important for you to be able to distinguish whose graph you are reading um, as quickly as possible. So that's why we have the graph title. It'll say Johnny's target behaviors for decrease, Emily's target behaviors for increase. Read that title because it lets you know what you should be looking for. If you're not looking for Johnny's behavior, then you can go on to the next graph. If you're wondering why all of the data points are skyrocketing, up or it's because we are tracking behaviors for increase. So that will explain what it is that you're looking at. The axis titles, just as important as the graph title. So the axis titles tells you exactly how you are measuring. So remember when I said the Y axis measures behavior, right? But when you add the title, the title will help you identify which measurement are you using. Are you tracking frequency? Are you tracking duration? Are you tracking percentage? So you wanna put that in the title so everybody knows how to interpret this graph. Same with the x-axis. Shouldn't just say time, it should say months or sessions or years, 2004, 2005, 2006. So the axis titles, it labels exactly what is along that axis. It gives you more information when you are ready to interpret that graph. Okay, baseline. In this graph that we're showing here, I'm only showing baseline. So baseline is before we intervene at all, before 
the behavior analyst comes in and does anything before we implement reinforcement or punishment or before skill acquisition, before we do anything, how many times does this behavior occur? That is our baseline. If we start with baseline, then we know once we implement our interventions, if it's working because the data should change from baseline. So you always want to start with baseline. Remember, baseline is behavior as usual. Behavior before anyone steps foot on the scene and says, hey, let's try this, okay? Once we try this, we are no longer in baseline, okay? Which brings me to the next term, which is our intervention phase, okay? So there should be a difference in the data points from baseline phase to intervention phase, especially if the intervention is working. So there could be a lot of reasons why interventions don't work, right? Um, they're not being implemented consistently. Um, the individual is missing some days. So but in a perfect scenario, in a perfect graph, there should be some distinction between the baseline data and the intervention data. Either baseline is up here and the intervention drop down low, or we reverse it, depending on if you're trying to increase or decrease a behavior. That is in a perfect world. Let's just say that. What separates the baseline and the intervention? That is what we call the phase change line. So that is so important because as be, as trained behavior analysts, we may know just by looking at a graph like, oh, okay, I can see that intervention must have happened right here on, on March 17th because I see the difference in data. But we're not only presenting this data to other behavior analysts. We're presenting it to the educators and the parents and the paraprofessionals and the teachers and everything. So we include a phase change line. So everyone knows on March 20th, that is when we started implementing these ABA strategies. Or a phase change line can just be any major change in the environment. So a phase change line can indicate there was a change in the intervention. A phase change line can indicate that there was a pause in service. There was a change in the environment. There was a death in the family. There was a birth in the family. There was a pause in service. Like a phase change line just lets you know that something drastic happens here and that should account for the change in behavior data. Speaking of data, let's talk about data points. So this is probably very obvious, but the little dots that are on the graph, those are called data points or data points, however you want to pronounce it. Um, so you want to make sure all of your data points connect unless there was a break in service. So you will notice that the data points will never connect from baseline across the phase change line into the intervention phase, right? Um, if there was any other pause in service, you don't connect. So let's say you met on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you didn't meet. If you start back again on Sunday, you, you should not connect those two data points. And that helps everyone to see that there has been some type of break in service. Now that we know the parts, let's make it make sense. There are three major terms that you will need to know when studying for your BCBA exam or your RBT exam. And these are just three good terms to know anytime you are analyzing data. That is variability, trend, and level. Let's start with variability. So when we are looking at data points, Variability are the highs and lows of the data points. So if you see a line graph and it goes all the way up to 100 and goes all the way down to 10 and then all the way up to 90 and all the way down to 14 and then all the way up to 100, it's like, what is going on here? Because on certain days, he is like killing it. And then other days we are going all the way back down. What is going on here? So that is called high variability. That's high ups and downs. That is not what, that is not an ideal picture because we don't know what's going on. When, when there is high variability, then we need to do some more investigating to see what's going on in the environment to where we can't have a whole week 
of stable responding. So when you think of variability, just think of highs and lows, highs and lows. If, you, if you're always up and down, up and down, up and down, nobody can predict your behavior. So we want steady rate of responding so that we can make predictions and um, intervene. And this will help us identify if our interventions are actually working and not just working every other day. Trend. Now, trend is the overall direction of the data. So trend allows us to predict how the data will continue if we keep the same interventions in place. So um, sometimes you may see an increasing trend where the data points seem to be going up and up and up, gradually going up, then that was that's what we would call an increasing trend. And if we continue the interventions like we like we're doing it now, then we can almost predict that by the end of this session or by the end of the month, we would reach 100% success rate because we are seeing an increasing trend on this data. Same with a decreasing trend. That lets us know we're on the right track. Let's continue with this intervention and continue to get those behaviors down. So the trend is just the direction the behavior is going. Next is level. A level is the average value of the data points. So remember in the beginning when I said um, we're measuring the behavior on the y-axis? On the y-axis, you have it labeled 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? Within the graph, you see the data points are on 50, and then 50, and 50, and 50, and 50, and 50. When they ask you about the level, you can say the level is at a steady rate of responding at 50 for the last three trials or for the last three days or for the last three sessions. So that's one way to explain the level. But last but not least, let's get into some raw data. We are going to open up Excel and I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step on how to take raw data and turn it into a beautiful ABA graph in APA format. So the first thing you do is open Excel and enter your data. Column A, dates or session. Column B, data, either in frequency, duration, or et cetera. For this one particularly, we're gonna do frequency. Next thing you do is you highlight the data and you in, insert a line graph. So you highlight the data, you click insert, then you click line graph, and you choose a simple line graph. I like to choose this one. Next, you customize the graph. This is where you add your titles for your x-axis and your y-axis. This is also where you will add your phase change line, your chart title, and there are a few other things that you have to do in order to make a graph a PA format. For example, you may want to make the entire graph times New Roman. You may want to remove the grid lines. Um, you wanna make sure your data points are circled in and not the empty circles. Just a lot of little tedious work behind that. But for the most part, this is how you make a simple graph. Okay, let's wrap this up. Now you have learned how to read, analyze, and create ABA graphs. Like, kudos to you. So I encourage you to save this video, watch it over and over again. And honestly, this is a skill set. If you don't use it, 
you'll lose it. There is so much that we need to learn about graphs, especially on Excel and how to make graphs. So continue to watch this video, watch it again, save it, share it with a friend. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Comment below if you have any questions on any parts of the graph. And for my Patreon, I will insert some mock graphs in a poll and you can interpret them and I will respond back. All right, so stay tuned for more content.